Uh, Dean Maloney's next end is going to be a break. ED, do the applausos. Is right, everyone else. Please welcome Dean Maloney. I haven't even fucking started yet, lad. Nice one. <laughs> nice one, lad. <laughs> <laughs> fucking swat. <laughs> Hiya. You all right? Nice this. Nice to do a local gig. It's nice to be here uh, gigging in my own city. I, uh, I've done a gig recently in Manchester. Anyone in from Manchester? <laughs> yeah, we got one in. Nice to see you, man. Um, yeah, I was on a gig in your city last week. And I stood at the bar waiting to go on stage. And this man clad came over, <laughs> tapped me on the shoulder and just went. <laughs> Which apparently is a word in Manchester. Um, <laughs> I went, what's up, lad? He went, have you just took my bottle of copper bag off the bar? <laughs> and what are you on about? He went, I had a bottle of copper bag on the bar. It's gone missing and it just so fucking happens, there's a scouser still right in front of me. I said, fuck off, lads. If I'm going to Manchester to steal something, it's going to be worth it, innit, kid? It'll be like a nice coat or some other comedian's better jokes or something, lad, you know what I mean? I'm proud to be a scouser, though. I am, I'm proud to be a scouser. I love being from Liverpool. I think right now this country is in its best position ever to have its very first scouse prime minister. How fun would that be? No, it would. I can't wait until, until a Scouse Prime Minister gets voted in and everyone stood outside 10 Downing Street waiting to get a glimpse of the new Scouse Prime Minister. And all they hear coming down the road is a Golf GTI blasting Tupac. <laughs> the Scouse Prime Minister jumps out the car head to toe in Under Armour, rolling a spliff. A removal truck pulls up and nothing but an Xbox and a 55-inch telly in the back of it. <laughs> the national press. Prime Minister, will you be speaking to members of the Green Party anytime soon? Green Party. <laughs> it's a party with green, yeah? Prime Minister, the NHS, it's underfunded, understaffed, and looks like it's going into US privatization. What do you think about that? It's fucking heavy, that, like, it is. Uh... <laughs> I love telling that joke because it works with fucking anything. Honestly, I don't know if anyone in here is religious, right? But imagine a scouse Jesus, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, nah, right. As I say, I'm not religious, but I remember being in RE in school, and we learned about the story from the Bible, and it was called the miraculous drought of fish. And if you don't know what that was, right, one of Jesus' disciples, Matthew, he was fishing for two days, couldn't catch, catch, couldn't catch a single fish, right? Then Jesus come along in his one sense. <laughs> and he went, Matthew, lad, do us a favor, cast your line into deeper waters. And before they knew it, they'd caught that many fish that the boat overflowed. And I promise you now, in fact, I guarantee you, if Jesus was a scouser, he would have got a picture with every fucking fish, wouldn't he? <laughs> New carp record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm married as well. Any married people in? Anyone married? Yeah. You married guy, yeah? No? <laughs> you married at the back? Yeah? Yeah? How long have you been married for? A month. Oh. That's cute, actually, doesn't it? Give that a little clap. That's lovely, that. Well, in. <laughs> Wait until you get to where I'm at, mate. I'm five years in, and the, uh, the only way I can describe my missus is a fucking nutcase. <laughs> she is, man. She's weird, man. Just after Christmas, my missus said to me, Dean, we're going on a diet. And I thought, hold on a minute. I want to stand up for myself here. So I said, yeah, all right, love, son. <laughs> um, so what we done was we took our weight. We took our beginning weight. And a week later, we weighed ourselves again. I'd lost five pound. She'd lost one pound. Does anybody in this room want to guess what happened next? <laughs> she fucking flipped me. Oh, my God! What the 
fuck is going on? We've been eating the same fucking stuff. You've lost five pounds. I've only lost one pound. Why is it dropping off you? You're just going to get thin, aren't you? You're going to fuck me off. You're going to meet someone else. I'll be honest. I was thinking about it. Right? I said, love, look. You've lost a pound next week. You might lose some more. See what happens. Not even five minutes later, she said to me, daughter, Neve, get us a bag of crisp out the cupboard. And trying to be a supportive husband, I said, are you sure you want them? Does anybody in this room want to guess what happened next? She fucking flipped. Oh, so I'm just a fucking whale, am I? Is that what you're saying to me? No, Neve, take the kiss back, because Daddy just thinks I'm fucking huge. I'm a fucking whale. He's going to meet someone else. He's going to fuck me up. I said, shut up, you fat bitch. <laughs> Two nights on the couch, that got me lad, but um, <laughs> it was just after Christmas and I had just got a new Xbox, so who's the real winner, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just one other thing on my missus, right? Who's the husband here? Right, are there keys like this, lad? <laughs> That's fucking nuts, that, innit? That's a problem, innit? Isn't that nuts? Man, I don't even know what she's got. She's got a ball of fluff. She's got a torch. A rape alarm. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fucking bitch, man. Um. I love it though. She's given me two girls, man. I've got two gorgeous girls. My dad, I've got Neve. Neve's autistic. She's seven. Or as I like to call it, shit a FIFA. Um. I shouldn't take the piss out of it though, to be honest. She come home from school last week. She was like, Dad, there's a lad in my school, he's picking on me, calling me names. I said, no problem. When I take you to school tomorrow, I'll tell the teacher and I'll get it sorted. But there's an old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. She went, boss. Took her to school. Said to the teacher, I want it stopping. When she come home from school, I said, has it stopped? She said, yeah, the lad has not called me a name all day. I thought, job done. She said, but... He called you a fat grass with man boobs. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, right? Sticks and stones can fuck off because that proper fucking got to me, that. I was in the bedroom that night going to me, Mrs. DR getting a bit big like that, <laughs> No, honestly, if my wife had tits this big, I'd probably stop shagging her sister, I'll be honest with you. Um, Got my other daughter, Zara. Zara's at this age where she finds a funny copy and everything. You say, do you know what I mean? The other day I was going to the shop. I was like, I'm just going to the shop, love. She's like, just going to the shop, love. Like, I'm back, babe. She's like, I'm back, babe. Like, do you think you're funny? Do you think you're funny? <laughs> Stop fucking copying me. Stop fucking copying me. So I said, you mind shagged the postman? She went, I know. <laughs> <laughs> The problem, right, with having an autistic daughter is she says what she, like, as soon as something comes in her head, she just says it. She doesn't think about it. She just says it. And it gets me in trouble sometimes because people don't know she's autistic until you tell them. And even today, today we were by the Asda and Walton and um, I saw some, some lads from Manchester going to the game. They had the tops on and stuff like that. They were going to the game. One of them clearly had an amputation on his arm. And I saw her see him. And she looked at me and I went, please don't fucking say it. Please don't say it. And the lad was getting closer and closer. And she went, eat that! Look at him! And I was like, oh, don't say it. She went, eat your port, Man City! <laughs> Fair enough, though, innit? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna leave this with this joke, right? Because I fucking proper enjoyed this. And I'm gonna go before I uh, die on my ass. Um, <laughs> Oh, I have. This has been great. You've been fantastic. But let me just finish with this story. I was driving home from a gig recently and um, just driving down the motorway and this unmarked police car slammed on in front of me. I was like, what's going on here? The police got out and they started pointing guns at me. They went, wow. Like, Get out the car. So I got out the car. So put your hands behind your head. Done that. One of them came over. He went, have you got anything on you? You shouldn't have some. I have, yeah. Went, what have you got? Like, my wife's rape alarm.
<laughs> you went to anything else? I went, no, no, no. And the other one started patting me down like that. The words I heard next will stick with me for the rest of my life. Because all I heard was, I fucking knew it. He had me bottle of Copperberg this whole fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been fantastic. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your night. <laughs>